So welcome to episode two in this series. The first part, we're gonna get ourselves orientated a little bit with Flutterflow. If you are a newcomer to the platform, please do stick around for that. If you're eager to get started, then please move into the second part of this particular video where we'll start creating the foundation project, which will set us up nicely for the rest of this particular series. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. So if you've been using Flutterflow for a little while now, feel free to skip this particular section. But if you are new to Flutterflow, let's just take a few moments just to talk a little bit about some of the key areas to get yourself up to speed and up and running super, super quick. So what we've got on the screen at the moment is pretty well much a project which has been loaded into Flutterflow. On the left hand side, you can see here, this is the navigation menu. This is quite an important section here because what this allows you to do is it allows you to delve deeper into more subsections of Flutterflow flow to do various pieces of configuration. So for example, it might be that you are looking to change the styling or the theming. Um, you might want to be changing the topography um, and the fonts that you've selected inside your application. There's a dedicated section for that. It could be that you're looking to integrate your application with third party API services. There's a section in here that allow you to actually create those API calls that will then call out to those third party services. Now we'll be covering that in a more later series, but there's a section dedicated for that there. The bit that I need to draw your attention to is this area here. You can see here I've got a couple of folders, one called pages and one called components. Now obviously as you build up your Flutterflow projects you'll be creating many many different pages. Now what I've also got here is I've got a folder called components. Now components in this particular application are uh, sort of grouped pieces of functionality that I've kind of like grouped into a component which I've then dropped with inside a page. But just think of a component primarily as a reusable piece of functionality you can use in many, many different pages. But in because it's a component, it means you've only got to change it in one place and it'll be reflected right across all of those particular pages. That's one particular use case for a component. Now down here, I've also got the widget tree here. Now think of everything within inside of Flutterflow as a widget. So widgets can be interactive elements like buttons or text fields, um, or they can also be widgets which will allow you to kind of um, uh, perform layout like horizontal or vertical layouts within inside your application. So you, what you would do is you would you would apply these into your sort of your design canvas, and then you would be then putting widgets inside widgets, which will then develop this hierarchical structure that you can see here of all of our uh, all of our widgets in a in a, almost like a tree type way and of course I can sort of collapse these down here you can see here that I'm just kind of expanding in and contracting these particular widgets um, and as I sort of hover my mouse over you can see here that the actual highlighting that's happening here on the right hand side is obviously showing you exactly which widget that actually is so of course you can right click here and you've got different menu options and all that kind of stuff you can sort of copy and paste all these kind of widgets and move them about with inside the the hierarchy of your application. But of course, we'll delve much more deeper into that as we start developing our application. So then we've got the design canvas in the middle here. There's many, many different options here available to you. And again, we'll go into these in more detail. But for example, you've got this little moon here, which are currently you can see here, I'm in a dark mode theme. I like to present everything I do in a more uh, sort of dark mode. And of course, you can you may have yours in light mode. But um, you can see here that um, I've kind of got two sort of themes inside this particular application. I've got a dark and light mode. And there's a toggle there, which allow me to very easily be able to see uh, what my application is looking like, depending on the theme that I've got currently set. So we'll go into more of these different options as we sort of work through the particular application. At the top here, you can see here, I've got a quick way for me to be able to size up my design canvas. So I can just get that idea to exactly what sort of size, what things are looking like actually on different sizes of uh, applications. So here you can see I've got a, a desktop view. I've then got a tablet view or I've then got a mobile view. Now, this is not a particularly responsive application because we're focusing here for the web. But of course, as we develop up our application, then we can obviously uh, we can then do more responsive design to then work across many, many different devices. So that's just a quick way for us to be able to see that. Now, up at the top here, we've got various options across our toolbar here. Um, just important ones to pick out at this particular time is this one here with a little bug. This is our project issue. So if things aren't kind of playing out well with inside our application, 
always keep an eye out there. If it's red, that means there's a problem in something that we've done wrong um, or something that's not quite set up right, then that will draw your attention. And generally by clicking on that, if it's red, it will then take you into the dedicated area to then correct those particular problems. And then we can then hopefully turn that back to green again and we can then carry on. But the key thing to remember, if that's red, our application will not run with inside the test mode. So make sure that's always green before you do actually test your application. And talking of test, that's that little option up here. We can click that and we can then run our application test mode or open up another browser window in this particular version of Flutterflow, which will then allow us to then quickly test within about sort of two to three minutes once that's actually built. And then of course, we'll get a, a test mode. We can then make changes with inside our application. We can then go back over to the test mode. We can do an instant reload. And within about 10 seconds, our changes will then get reflected with inside that test mode. So the bit down here on the right hand side, this is where you're probably going to spend quite a bit of your time when you've actually um, are clicking on various areas within inside your, um, your actual design canvas or the different widgets. You'll see here that on the right hand side, there's lots of different properties that can be set against those particular widgets. So you'll be spending a lot of time in here, getting everything looking just right um, in, for your application then to hopefully shape up to exactly how you need it to be. So that's pretty well much it. That is how we're going to leave this particular section now. And of course, we're going to run through a lot of this as we start developing this particular application. But hopefully that's got your bearings with inside Flutterflow. So let's now move on. Let's now start focusing on the actual design side of our application. Let's start by creating a brand new project and let's get ourselves now doing something a little bit more hands on. So uh, without further ado, let's get into that section now. OK, so we're ready to get our hands dirty in Flutterflow. So here I am on the Flutterflow dashboard. I'm just going to hit the top right button here where it says create new, hit that. And then we've got the project wizard that gets displayed. Now, here's a variety of templates that we could load, but we're not going to use any of those for this particular project. We're going to create ours completely from scratch. So just put a project name in. I'm going to call mine sticky notes like that. And I'm going to hit the create blank button here. And then now a wizard's going to come up. There is just a couple of things we need to change here. Let's change where it says my company with inside the package name to something that represents yourself. So I'm going to call mine the digital pro just like that. This means that when we come to and if we wanted to deploy this as a like a mobile application, for example, this is just uniquely identifies our application when we then deploy that to the actual uh, the actual application stores. So keep that as it is. We're going to not change any themes or anything like that. At this particular stage, we're going to come and do that very, very shortly. We're going to want to check the enable web option because this is a web application and we're going to take off a set of Firebase. We're going to turn that toggle off because in this particular season of this particular uh, series, we're not going to be adding any database support in there just yet. So let's now hit the start building option. Now that means that we're now into a very generic um, out of the box a project. And we now need to go and make some further customization to this to kind of get us ready for us to start putting some widgets on the actual canvas. So let's go and make those changes now. So before we get started, then let's just do a little bit of housekeeping with inside the application settings. Now, what I'm going to get you to do is move over to the little cog down in the bottom left hand corner. And here we are now inside your application settings. Now, if you move over to the platforms option here on the left hand side, you've got a number of different options available. We want to move into this one here called advanced web settings. If you just select that, you'll see that there's this toggle which allows us to use this canvas kit beta. Now, let's just turn that on because what that will allow us to do is we'll be able to use a more advanced Flutter rendering system for our web application when it gets deployed. So that just means that things just a little bit look a bit more crisper and sharper. Now, chances are when you're actually watching this video, that option may already be enabled. So for now, just keep that turned on and that should be a good for us with inside the app settings. There's no other changes we need to make at this particular time here. Let's now move over to the theme options. Let's make some slight changes to the color scheme with inside our application. OK, so let's move over to the theme settings option. Just move over here on the left hand side, choose themes settings, choose the color option here from the settings on the left. And you'll see here this is the color palette that you would have seen at the beginning. So the the theme in that we're going to use with inside our application is going to be quite simple, actually, that we're not using a huge amount of color. And in fact, we're not really going to be using a huge amount of colors from this particular palette. But there are some key colors with inside here that's going to be really important to us. And they're going to be important because when we switch between light 
light mode and dark mode, we want to make sure that our UI looks like it's respecting the kind of the color scheme, depending on whether you're light mode or dark mode. So let's talk a little bit about our primary text and our secondary text, because those colors are quite important. So if you can imagine that in your application, the primary text might be a heading inside your application, but your secondary text might be like a subheading. So just be a little bit more subtle with inside the UI. You can see here that my utility color here, my primary text is a more much more bolder black color with inside this particular section here. And my secondary text is just a little bit more subtle. Now, if you then look at below that, you kind of got the dark mode option. You can see here that actually my secondary text and my primary text are of a complete contrast to the light mode theme. So when you're actually defining your color palette, just make sure you respect kind of what those themes are there to represent. OK, so they are the colors we've got there. And of course, you've got your primary background and your secondary background that you probably won't notice too much difference on screen here because we haven't really changed them yet. But you can see here that they're very, very that they are slightly subtly different as your my screen. This one is a kind of dark, a slightly darker primary background here. My secondary background is actually full white. Now we're going to make an adjustment to that very, very shortly because my primary background with inside my application is going to kind of be like this, this subtle kind of like off white color. And then the secondary background, which is going to be fully white, is then going to be the kind of the panel that kind of sits actually at the, the forefront of my application. So we'll make some changes there very shortly. But you can see though, in contrast to that, when the dark mode options, you can see here that the primary background is kind of got this kind of like subtle kind of gray effect. And then our secondary background is much, much darker. So we don't need to make too many changes to that. We're going to keep that as it is, because actually that works quite effective in, in our particular example. But we just need to make some changes to some of these other colors. And what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll probably adjust these later as the series progresses. And you'll see where they are applied when we're actually building out our application. So that's themes very, very quickly. Let's now go and make some adjustments now to some of these other values just so we can get the look that we need right off the bat with, with us building our application. So the first color I'm going to change is the secondary text here on the light mode. So just choose that. And I'm just going to paste a value in here and I'll get you to copy that within yours as well. So it's 9E, 9E, 9E. So just put that in there, hit use color, and then that's our secondary text set. So let's now change our primary background. Just select that one there. Let's just paste in another value here, which is E8, E, E, F, 6. Just say use color. That's the primary background set. So I'm just going to move over and change the Ascent 4. Just select that. Let's just paste a new value in here, which is 57636C. So just make sure you copy that. Just do a copy there. We're just going to move that down into the Ascent 4 just down here. In fact, the dark mode theme is going to use exactly the same color. Just choose that there. Let's just double click on that. Let's just paste the same one in there. Just say use color. Just say yes to that there. And we've pretty well much got everything we need as far as the theme. And as I said, we'll come back to some of this as the series progresses and you'll see how these are applied throughout the rest of the video. OK, just a final little bit of setup then before we move into the next video where we're going to start actually building the UI. Let's choose a little option up here for the desktop. Now, this is going to be obviously a web application, so you get your, your screen estate will be there nice and wide. Let's just select where it says page title. Let's just agree, sort of select that and hit the delete key. Let's get rid of that as we don't want to see any of that um, at all. And then on the left hand side here, you see we've got the pages here. Let's just double click on the pages actual folder name here. Let's just put an uppercase a P hit save. Now that is just a personal preference. Okay. So obviously as I move through this series, I will obviously give you some of my personal choices. And then on the left hand side here, move up to the little option here, choose, choose not new folder. Let's put a name in here called components with an uppercase C, just hit create folder. And then we've now got a directory that's now ready to hold all of our components that we would create. So that's it. I think we're in a good position now. So in the next video, we are then going to now start getting into the real meat of the construction. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.